Welcome back. It's now 9 o'clock. Voting is underway in Turkana Central and Fafi constituencies where voting was postponed on Thursday due to bad weather. IEBC Chair Wafulache Bukati says heavy rains made it impossible to transport voting material to the respective polling stations and the two constituencies. Voting in Luanyanza has, however, been postponed indefinitely over insecurity. IEBC has deferred the election in Siaya, Kisumu, Migori and Homa Bay counties to today but cancelled it yesterday. The National Resistance Movement, formerly NASA, has insisted that the repeat election is irregular. Uh, latest results of Thursday's election show President Uhuru Kenyatta is in the lead with over 7 million votes. All right, and uh, well, we're going to have a conversation here in studio, and let me take this opportunity to invite and also to welcome you to participate in the same via social media and the Twitter uh, handle to do that is at KTN News, or you can tweet me directly, and that's at Michael G. Gitonga, or the hashtag Kivumbi2017. Now, joining me, we have Lydia Mokami, who is the chair of Women's Candidates of Kenya uh, 2017. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. We also have James Mamboleo, who is a political analyst, and an advocate, and Steve Ogola, an advocate, and also a political analyst. Lady and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this morning. Let's start with uh, the, well, the exercise that took place on the 26th and in some areas could not take place. However, it seems literally like a switch by the, uh, by, uh, the announcement by the IEBC chair, Wafula Chebukati, him announcing that they've been called off today. We have uh, Luonyanza basically coming down. Let me start with you, Lydia, on your thoughts on that and what that tells us. It's a bit sad uh, because Kenya is one country Kenya should be moving uh, uniformly towards the same direction. So Kenya seems divided, and it's not a good thing. Does it seem divided, or are we actually divided? If you look at uh, basically the majority of Kenyans actually did vote. So just those parts that have been highlighted that uh, voting did not take place actually tells you that uh, Kenya is not moving the same direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, let me come to you, uh, um, Steve. Yes. And what really this tells us, uh, as per yesterday morning and afternoon, when it was still uh, scheduled for the elections to take place in some parts of Luonyanza, um, there was a lot of flare up with people coming out to uh, basically show their dissatisfaction with the election so far despite the fact that we have NASA leaders having made a clarion call that everybody should remain home. The minute Wafula Chebukati announces and says that the elections are not going to take place, it calms down. What does that tell us? I, I think uh, maybe we failed to capture a very important point. Kenyans care deeply about the presidency. That's our lived reality as a country. And if uh, I did not know, we've organized our politics. So we've organized our politics, our politics along ethnic formations. Alliances are built along ethnic uh, formations, and ethnic uh, political leadership uh, then use their communities for bargain, for political bargain. And then the communities also view those leaders as the vision bearers of their destiny. So if you have someone in the past of Raila Odinga not participating in this election, naturally the emotions are really high and the people feel disappointed and they don't want to be associated with that ballot. I can understand that. What I would have loved uh, for IBC to do, which eventually they did anyway, you see the law, Mr. Gitonga, is not removed from common sense. Neither are judges immune to reason. You must read the pulse of the people and then try to interpret the law in a manner that accommodates that position. If the law says you must conduct an election in all the 290 constituencies, and the law also provides, for instance, under Section 55, that if for one reason or another, especially security or a national emergency or disaster, that is not possible to conduct an election in one of those two constituencies that you postpone to a certain date. There is also a rider there, and I think there was a bit of confusion when IBC announced that they would conduct the elections today. I looked at Section 55B and looked at the two test standard, one, one of which is that when you're, when you're calling the next the election, for, when you're calling the next, the next time for the election, you must consider, one, the, the earliest practicable time. 
So today was actually the, the earliest time, but was it really practicable when emotions are still raw and people feel deeply divided and deeply disappointed? The division that we experience, the, the division and disappointment is done because we care about the presidency and our person, for instance, is the vision bearer. The other person is also the vision bearer of that community. So you may have made a decision to hold that election, but assessing the, the practicality of doing that election Conducting that election was obviously not, not possible. Then the second limb of that, of, of that provision says, you have to consider the results that are already in and then balance that or contradistinguish that with the results that are, out, uh, that, are outside, that are pending in those areas that haven't voted. If the results do not alter, if what is the final the, result. cannot alter the final result, then you can proceed and declare. And we expect IBC chair to actually now declare the results. So, but having said that, Kitonga, one thing that I would like to reference is this. Elections world over are fraught with challenges. And let nobody lie to us that Kenya is still an emerging democracy. And as an emerging democracy, the greatest challenge that we face is that of fraud and falsification of the electoral process. Now, that is the context in which Raila withdrew from the race. I really feel sad because withdrawing from the race really raised this tension because the manner in which we organize our politics. But the all is not lost for NASA supporters, for Raila Odinga, because we are still in a rule of law. The rule of law itself, which is a very delicate but crucial ideal, requires that after the elections, you document everything that you think was part of that fraudulent process and you present it in court. And it's open to any, including Raila himself. He needed not to have participated in this election to challenge its outcome. So what I would expect is this going forward, IBC should, should move with speed to finalize the voting of, in the outstanding areas then determine and declare who is the winner and let parties who are dis, uh, dissatisfied or think that the process was a sham, as it's being said, to go to court, the proper, the proper, the proper location, the proper place to address, to, that. to address that is now in a court of law, not in a public rally. Wow. I would urge that approach that takes us to the court because then we are able to preserve national tranquility as we determine what is the way forward. First of all, regarding the validity, the legitimacy of this, equation, this election. The other issue, which, is, which the politicians completely refused to accept, especially the NASA formation, the legality of this election, Gitonga, was never in doubt. Insofar as the election was being conducted pursuant to Article 140, sub Article 3, which says the election to be conducted in 60 days, that order was not vacated by a court of law. So you may have had problems with the process. You thought it was fraud with challenges, fraud and falsification, but that is not equivalent to challenging the legality. So the legality of this election was never in doubt, is still not in doubt. The legitimacy of this election or the legality of the results, now that can now be the results, not the election, mm -hmm. that can now be challenged in court. And I pray that all Kenyans who are dissatisfied in one way or another, let us now transition because in terms of election dispute resolution mechanism, now triggers in or comes into play, immediately we close the election, elections are, the results are determined and declared. We should not have this narrative of uh, this, this sort of discounting the results in public spaces. That may feel Actually, that even if there are some legitimacy in that claim, it may actually serve to exclude the people, for instance, who supported Jubilee, because in this country, Uru Kenyatta also has supporters, people Correct. who believe that mm -hmm. they went to vote okay. for Kenyatta. So I think the point is, mm -hmm. from now on, going forward, let us see, insofar as the election is concerned, let us now move this theater of discussion from the, from the political spaces to the courtrooms so that we can get a decent closure in this matter. In this matter. All right. Uh, Mamboleo? Was it a miscalculation on Wafula Chebukati's part to have called for the elections on Saturday? And is there going to be a time in your thinking? He might be trying to beat the 60-day deadline, but in your thinking, do you think there's going to be a time within that frame time that there will be a good or correct time uh, to call for that election? Michael, that's um, a very good question. However, you have let my friend Steve... Uh advocate uh, go on about many many things which probably I agree with and others I do not agree which which might fly out there without a rebuttal however this is what we must understand which is extremely important Michael let's not mix issues okay let's not try to address every evil that bedevils this nation through this discussion about this election we understand Kenya has several socio-economic and political challenges which have been simmering for a very long time and which seem to boil to the surface during elections. However, 
it will be extremely wrong for this country to want to engage itself in a process in which it is going to solve all those problems through one election or through a discussion about election. Now, coming to your, coming to your point, the question is, was it necessary for uh, Wafula Chabukati to call for an election uh, today in those areas which um, had resisted the election in the first place? I don't think that was uh, proper, properly advised because the emotions are still high. There is absolutely no reason for staging a situation in which the logical consequence is going to be a confront confrontation between the supporters of NASA and, um, and, IABC and, and IABC officials on the one side and the police, most likely. So I think that was uh, not very properly advised, but I think he's trying to execute his mandate to try and give them an opportunity to actually vote. Now, having said this, this is what I need to say say about the leadership of uh, the coalition that those supporters actually support. First and foremost, um, it is extremely illegal and constitutional for any leader or for any supporters of any leader to prevent the IEBC from staging an election. Their responsibility as citizens of this country is to protest against that election in a manner that is consistent with the Constitution and the law. And if it is by demonstration, then they should look up to the Constitution at Article 37 for that guidance generally, and then look at the other electoral laws and uh, the Public Order Act and many other acts of parliament which guide us in situations of this kind. Now, there is a political dispute there's a political grievance that a section of Kenyans have that cannot be underplayed, but it cannot be treated or remedied by resort to violence, which is also inconsistent with the Constitution and the law. And we have kept saying, let us be very consistent in the manner in which we interpret our Constitution and the law. Let us not pick only those uh, bits of the Constitution which support us and then, of course, um, contravene or violate all those other sections which do not support us. But ultimately, there is a political question which seems to require a remedy. There is division in this country which, which requires to be addressed. But how this political division is addressed is an important thing going forward. And I think something that we should tell every Kenyan is that this is a political contest, okay? A political contest is going to produce a loser and a winner, especially if it is going to be conducted under the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya 2010, which is a presidentialist system, which does not allow the loser to take anything home. It's winner takes it all. It is winner takes it all. Now, that is a different discussion. If we are dealing with uh, a situation, there are many who have said, for instance, that you know it doesn't make sense for uh, a candidate to go into an election, garner 6.7 million votes, if uh, that 6.7 million votes uh, that uh, Raila Odinga garnered in the last election is, is to be believed, okay, and then spend several billions of shillings, excite a certain sense of hope in a certain section of the population, and then after all, after all this, nothing goes to them. Now, that is a completely different debate, mm. which can be remedied through a different uh, process. However, one thing I need to support right now, it is obvious that President Uhuru Kenyatta is going to be declared the winner. What he needs to do is to understand that he now becomes president for every Kenyan, including those people who did not vote for him. And I think it is incumbent upon him to try everything within his means to make sure that this country goes forward a united nation. And what does he need to do? He needs to engage in dialogue. He needs to reach out. However, something that we must be very clear, let this discussion still be held within the confines of the law and the constitution. And then most importantly, right from the very onset, let us state the kind of discussion we need to have so that we have proper parameters. Let us frame the questions. Let this dialogue not be a dialogue in which a few people sit with the other side to ask uh, about how they might be included in, in the sharing of power. Okay. And so that this country moves forward, a united country. All right, Lydia, let me come to you. I, I know you want to give a rebuttal there, but we're in a country where we are used to commissions being formed, we are used to uh, investigations being done, but somehow these things seem to blanket us from the truth because we never seem to get results out of them. Let me start with the Krigler Commission because some of the issues we are dealing with now are not necessarily issues that are brought about by this election. They're not necessarily issues that are brought about by the fact that the, the election was flawed. We have historical injustices that are weighing in and probably spilling over to where we are today. Lydia, 
what is our solution? Do we have hope? Because even now, if, as, as, as Mamboleo says, uh, if Uhuru is declared president, assuming that uh, he is sworn in and all that, um, the hue and cry from many people is that he needs to speak to the country and resolve. But do we expect that to happen, given the history that we're coming from? Uh, first of all, it's, it's a bit appalling. And uh, seriously, our leaders need to stop looking at us like robots. But maybe we have allowed them to become robots. Oh. We have allowed ourselves to become robots to them. Actually, I totally agree with what they are saying. And, and as a rider, I want to call upon the leaders of this country. It is nonsense to keep preaching peace when you come to the public domain. But be, behind the doors, behind the curtains, you're calling people, inciting and paying them to go do damage, to go violate the law, to go violate the rights Clarify, of others. What do you mean by calling people, paying them to go and do damage? Yes, yes, because I don't think anyone rightfully thinking in Kenya will go do the kind of things that we are seeing happen. I don't think really uh, this is happening out of people's free will. I am tired of uh, two individuals fighting, and I'm drawn into the fight as a common Kenyan citizen. I, so, sorry, let, let me pause you because we want to cross over to Bomas of Kenya. Let me just pause you there. We'll come back to you, okay. Lydia. Sorry for that. And we want to cross over to our reporter, Rita Tinina, who is at Bomas of Kenya. Rita Tinina, what updates do we have from Bomas? Well, Michael, the verification of uh, the results is going on here at the National Telling Center. It is a process that have been, has been going on throughout the night. Right now, the commission has managed to verify 69 results, results from 69 uh, constituencies. Remember, this is a procedure or a process that the commission did not go through Fully. during the August general election. And what happens this time is that at the constituency level, at the level of the wards, uh, the polling centers, uh, this time time, once the polls closed, the presiding officers in the polling stations scanned the results form. They sent uh, the scanned form to the IEBC portal, but then took the physical form to the returning officer at the constituency level. The returning officer at the constituency level then received all the form 34 A's from the polling centers in ESO constituency, collated them to make form 34 B, scanned form 34 B, sent it to the portal, but then brought the physical form. Form 34B and Form 34A is here to the National Telling Center. Some returning officers are here to uh, bring their forms here. But on the portal, 241 Form 34Bs have been uploaded. Uh, so that means about another uh, 49 uh, papers, Forms 34B are yet to be uploaded. And once the forms have been verified here, once the returning officers have brought the Forms 34B and Form 34A, uh, behind me there are uh, tables, clusters uh, for constituencies, uh, the verification uh, process. And once they go through and ensure uh, that the forms tally, then they give the figures uh, to the national returning officer who is now announcing those results. So only once they have been uh, verified, that is when the returning officers are now presenting the results to the IEBC chairman, who's the national returning officer, and then now they are being displayed on the giant screens here at the national uh, telling center. But Michael, remember, even if they are verifying those results, there is nothing the IEBC chair and uh, can do about them. He had gone to court seeking to know if there are any discrepancies, what can he do? The Supreme Court in its ruling uh, during the presidential petition uh, found that the IEBC did not verify the results. He announced the national returning officer, IEBC chairman of Fule Chibukati, announced the results without verification. And when he moved to court, he said he was confused. He says the Supreme Court says, I didn't verify, but an earlier uh, ruling by the Court of Appeal in June in the case that was filed by Maina Kiai, the court ruled that the results announced at the polling centers are final and the IEBC chairman cannot do anything about them, cannot alter, cannot edit. So the, the chairperson was feeling that his hands were tied. But now, when the Supreme Court gave its ruling saying he cannot alter them, it also noted that what the IEBC commission the chairman can do is before announcing the final results, he can put it to the public that these are the results, but they are this 
and these discrepancies in them and then go ahead to announce the final uh, results. Michael as well, the whole of yesterday, the IEBC chairman, there are several questions, pressing issues, pressing questions that we have been having yesterday. He tactfully avoided questions uh, from the media. There are only three press briefings. In all of them, he did not address any questions. In the first one, uh, we said we wanted to ask a few questions. He said, no, let me first of all launch the verification of this exercise, of the verification of results. And that was happening just uh, behind me. And so he came from the stage, went down to at the auditorium, launched, and then just took the stairs and left. When he came back again, he just read the statement. That is when he postponed uh, the uh, election that was scheduled for today in 27 constituencies, read that statement and left. And what has been happening is that the IEBC chairman himself or the vice or the commissioners are now coming to announce the results that have been verified from the constituencies. But we are hoping that today he can be able to take questions uh, from the press. A number of issues, most of them just about figures. The voter turnout, just how many people turned out to vote. Day before yesterday he had said 48% uh, was the voter turnout. Later on his Twitter handle said only 6.5 million voters are turned out to cast their ballot. But even in the figures, some of which are circulating in the media, some of those figures have gone beyond that 6.5 million uh, mark. And so we want to know exactly how many people turned out to vote. As well, there is the issue of the forms. Yesterday, the IEBC chairman said that they had received all the form 34As on their portal. Right now, in the portal, it is reading that there are 37,145 forms. If the IEBC chairman goes with the word that those are all the forms they were expecting, he also indicated yesterday that uh, 3,635 uh, polling stations did not uh, participate in the election. So that that 37,145, if you add the polling stations from which no results are expected, you get 40,780, which does not account for about 103 polling stations, bearing in mind that the country has a total of 40,883 uh, polling stations. So Michael will, will be seeking today, hoping that he can take questions. If he does not address these issues in his press statement, then we'll be seeking to find out the major issue here is about numbers. The other thing is uh, what happens to the constituencies where the poll was postponed. The KCP exams kick off next week. On Monday, there will be the rehearsals on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday and Thursday day will be the exams so perhaps the commission if it was going to schedule another election may not be considering those three days so we'll try and find out when the commission is considering to hold the election in those 27 constituencies michael all right thank you rita for that very detailed and well put together update of what is happening at the nerve center the tallying center that is at bomas of kenya we will be coming back to you possibly later uh, when we have more information that has come in or possibly when the IEBC chair, Wafula Chebukati, will have come to stage. And, of course, some of those questions raised there by Rita in regards to some of the numbers. And also, uh, interestingly, this time, the chair not wanting to answer any questions but just giving his reports and basically exiting the stage. We also notice uh, that we have spaced out updates from the chair as opposed to when we had the August 8th elections where there were a bit more regular now we have less but uh, those are of course questions that we're going to raise as we carry on and the bigger question of course the numbers remember he started by first of all saying that the voter turnout was 48 percent on his twitter handle it changed to 33 percent i believe it was and then uh when we do the simple math it gives you numbers currently we also have some of the numbers that are coming in so those are some of the questions uh that we'd like to pose and put before it. uh the the ie BC Chair Wafula Chebukati. For now, we want to take a short break. We're also joined by Brian Aguna, uh, who is a political researcher, and we're going to continue with our conversation right here on Kivumbi 2017. Remember, you're welcome to participate in the conversation online as well. But we take a break for now. We'll be right back.